relationships. Okay, um, I've been quite a lot of talk from people I follow on it of late, and I think it was well, it was something that um, Reverend Simon Sideways said on his channel. He was uh, doing a test, and it turned into talking about relationships. I mean, the vast majority of people who are alone, generally, the men tend to want to be in a relationship, but seem to be, or have been burned by women very badly, and they're very reluctant to go back into another relationship with a possible woman who might be ideal for them. But with the women, the vast majority of the women, their attitude was one of can't really be bothered with it. You all generally to be seem to be the same. Seem to be wary. It is nice to be in love. I enjoyed it when I was in love. I do, and I do miss it. I, I miss the physical contact. I miss the support. I miss the back up there. I miss the uh, the feeling of a man, the smell of a man. Yeah, I do. I can't deny it. <laughs> but it comes to a point where you've been on your own for, what, since 2008? I think it was. Yeah, God, that's a long ago. 15 years, I think, now. That I just... Uh, you see, I went through a period of being very, very upset, hurt, rejected. Even though I left, I was the one who made the decision to leave. I just got myself into another job that took me away from everything. The army, basically. Threw me into an environment where there are millions, thousands, I should say, not millions. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of men, I guess. The vast majority of them were men. I didn't feel a need to be in a relationship. The years have gone by and you turn around and you look at your past life and you think, my goodness, where did it go? You look back over 15 years and it seems, wow, such a long time. But when from, say, this point onwards, if you're about 40 years old and you look at your life and you think 15 years away, it's not, that's like long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long time. If you're 30 and you think 15 years ahead, that's difficult to imagine. But if you look back 15 years, it just seems like it's a blink of an eye. And you do look back over your past life and you think, I wish I had, or I wish I hadn't. And you look back with a tinge of regret, but you've got to let go of those regrets because if you don't you end up being bitter sad depressed and then worried and fearful about everybody else in the world not willing to take a chance on love again i have been willing to take a chance on love at the very beginning of working in the army environment i did get a few offers <laughs> i also got a few people who men <laughs> who said to me uh I'm not being braggy when I say this because it's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> Said, you're the most attractive coffin dodger I've ever met. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness me. Is that what it's come to? <laughs> Scoundrel. <laughs> Could have slapped him around the face. <laughs> but it was true for him. I was an old woman. <laughs> 40. Oh gosh, even that's gone by really quickly. Anyway, my voice has gone funny, so I think I might re-record this. <clears throat> I don't know why. I feel as though I'm talking to a lot of people who don't actually listen to me of late, and my voice is disappearing as a result because it's my subconscious mind saying to me, you're not worthy of a voice. <laughs> I guess that's the nature of my job, basically, isn't it? Maybe that's why I feel a bit... I'll give you an example. I woke up this morning with this dream in my head of all these deer coming around me. 
Now I saw a deer the other day at the cabin and it was beautiful. It just stared at me and my landlady and it just stood there silently, just peering into the window as though we were the animals in the zoo. <laughs> and it was beautiful. Such a strange beast. I've never seen one up close and personal like that before. Granted, there was a window between us and he was outside on the grass. And I so wish I'd been able to move out really slowly and get a camera to film it because, you know, if I'd done that, I'd have got 10 million views. <laughs> but, but I didn't. Yeah, I had a dream about these deer. And they were coming up to me. The baby came up to me first and then the mother came and they all just surrounded me and loved me. Not sexually, but just, you know, did their animal stuff, sniffed me, rubbed them, their heads up against my shoulders and and it just made me feel wanted and and loved. And I I felt totally at one with myself. And when I woke up I felt this terrible yearning to be with a man. <laughs> I know. No, it's not awful. It's just natural human instinct, I guess. And that's the first time in a long time I felt that. And I don't know if it's anything to do with this new spiritual alignment that we're coming into, this different atmosphere that's being created. Because when you look at Satan's realm, it's all about sex and debauchery and pornography and things like that and and I do recommend that if you are a man or a woman and you are heavily into porn I would really recommend you don't go down that avenue because what it does is it uses up all your sexual energy everything gets drained and then you feel depleted and you want more and more and more of it and you crave it and you yearn for it one way out of it really is to go into yourself and what does that mean I often used to wonder what that meant when when people used to say go within <laughs> I thought crackpot <laughs> but it just means know yourself know what is the bigger picture know what you really want out of life if you want to be sexually satisfied and you want a good relationship with somebody, then look for somebody with the qualities that you respect and honour. I mean, there are plenty of lies told about people by people who want something from somebody who know they can't get it, so they have to tell porkies about other people <laughs> who this person possibly is attracted to. And that's so unfair. You've got to see through all that bullshit and just make your own assumption. Make your own uh, challenges come to the fore. Live life the way you want to. And as you go through these experiences with a new person, and you think, can I live with this? Is this exciting for now? Or is it going to continue? Obviously, the excitement can't be there all the time because you'd burn yourself out. And as you get older, it doesn't mean to say that those wantings or desires are gone completely because they're not. They're still within me. They're still, I don't think they'll ever go away really. I still yearn. I still want. I still feel like a sexual woman. But I know that my age and um, even my profession puts people off <laughs> because... They think I'm analysing them all the time. Well, that's the nature of the beast, I guess, isn't it? And you've got to decide whether you're courageous enough to be able to take that on board and accept it. And, uh, you know, the whole thing about getting older means that your pool of possibilities is getting smaller. But that's OK for me. I don't mind because then I know that anybody who approaches me, they're going to be possibly people who are real and not playing around. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is that even me, even I, feel low and depressed and anxious and worried and fearful and I put up barriers and I also feel sometimes where's the point because I have ideas in my head and values that are very strong and I understand that not everybody wants to have that but 
what I'm trying to say is don't feel as though you're alone in this yearning, this being alone thing, because there are hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people who feel like this. And especially in the Western societies, because we've been encouraged to break down the family unit. We've been encouraged to disobey. We've been encouraged to fight for independence and fight for our identities. We've been coerced into looking at the bad side of somebody instead of looking at the qualities in in each of us that are meant to be sacred. I, I look at men now and I feel sorry for them. I do. I want to apologise for what women have done. You know what's going on in the world now. If you don't, then you really are asleep. And I don't know what I can do to wake you up, but <laughs> the thing is, society has been encouraged to be like this. And it's right from early 1900s, I guess, when I look at how the <sighs> asylums were organised. It's as though everybody was mad uh, back then. They thought everybody was mad. You're thinking of a woman who cries an awful lot today. She's just a sensitive person, a weeping woman. But in the 1900s, she was put into an asylum because she was considered mad and they couldn't help her. That happened to a lot of people. And in the 60s, people had lobotomies done because they were so excitable and rebellious teenagers. But society at the time thought that they were too overexcited and they needed to be calmed down. And these ECT therapy, they call it therapy, it's not therapy, it's fucking torture. Electroconvulsive therapy, where they fry your brain. <laughs> I totally disagree with it. And yet it's making a comeback. It is so barbaric. They say it's not now because they give them calming bloody pills or injections before they do it to them so they're not freaking out while they're being electrocuted. And now, if a, a boy or a girl misbehaves in class or runs around screaming and misbehaving in school, what do they do? Stick them on drugs. Calm them down. All they have to do is stop feeding them the bloody sweets. <laughs> And boys are not meant to be in classrooms. They're meant to be outside learning things practically with their hands. Girls are okay in the classroom environment, except for the, the girls who want to be adventurous. But then that's up to the schooling system to decide how these children react to different environments, different stimulants, different ways of learning. But no, it's all. Lump them all in one little category. You're misbehaving, you can go on drugs. And then as you grow older, you're not taught how to interact with people. You're not taught how to communicate. You're not taught the basic necessities of life. You're just taught reading, writing and arithmetic. Granted, some people go into the arts, learn how to play an instrument, how to use a paintbrush or a drawing pencil. And that's wonderful if you've got those opportunities. But if you are a type of person who is very shy, uncommunicative, unable to put yourself out there then you're going to get left behind i should be a school counselor shouldn't i <laughs> yeah, i'd love to do that because i loved helping the soldiers because they were young lads and they often came to me for relationship advice oh my goodness me <laughs> but if they're unhappy they're facing all these challenges that are roping them into a system that they don't want to be in that's my job to help them find the confidence to avoid that to get out of it to get the strength in order to say that one little word no <laughs> when i look at all the challenges that people had then all these broken lives i do feel their pain i do well up when they tell me these horrific stories but I also am able to separate myself enough to use the tools that I've been trained to use in order to help them get the better of their life in the way that they want it not the way I want it give them opportunities give them ideas tell them how they can use their skills and knowledge that they have but all of this all of these challenges these problems these issues that people have in their life they all boil down to relationships 
they all boil down to not being loved and at the most extreme being abused being rejected being abandoned and it is so 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 sad I, I feel myself welling up now <laughs> I just feel that pain and all this to do with relationships people finding somebody to love it is hard especially now the kids who are grown up now are they're going into a minefield now look at philip Schofield, for instance a poor woman believed he was a man who loved her gave her two children and built a life together with him and then it turns out he loves another man and not only another man but basically a child so how devastated must she be they were all focusing on him but what about her what was she feeling and this me too movement i just think it pushed men aside such an awful degree that a lot of them committed suicide if you ever can to contemplate in suicide please think of this right life can get so bad so terribly awful it can make you feel so much pain inside that you look around you and you think why am i here where is the point to this there's no meaning to it all nobody wants me why should i be bothered they, they won't care if i'm not here because they don't care while i am here and so they get to a point where they think I might as well just not be here and they figure out ways to end that life and it is very difficult to end your life this is why the vast majority of women the way their brains work females i'm talking about with estrogen inside of them <laughs> their suicidal thoughts are mainly a cry for help which is why they turn to pills rather than something more drastic like a man usually does when a man decides he makes a plan and he normally goes ahead with it and he's going to go ahead with it in a way that makes a final decision <sighs> and i won't discuss all the ways that they do it because you'll get ideas <laughs> i don't want to plant ideas in your head because what i'm trying to say is that this life is valuable all these challenges that you are facing right now if you are feeling really low depressed anxious fearful addicted to anything in order to get away from facing up to the challenges that are there then think of this it gets bad life gets bad life gets really shitty But if you give up, if you give up right now, you'll never know how much better it can get. You'll never have that choice anymore. Just think if you stopped making that plan, if you stopped making that, just that one thing that took you over to the other side, the other realm, whether you believe it's there or not i know it's there but this is a life this is a body that you have been blessed with in order to learn about life learn about all these complexities these emotions these experiences that you have and if you get to the point where you think no i've had enough just stop just pause just breathe take a nice deep breath and think what if i lived tomorrow what if when i woke up in the morning things changed what if somebody came into my life and made a difference 
what if nobody came into my life and I just felt different? What if instead of ending my life like this, I could use my life for the benefit of somebody else? Have you ever watched that film, Pay It Forward, with Jim Caviezel? Is a man desperate, wanting to die. And somebody comes along and saves him by giving him a roof over his head. And then when he finally leaves, he goes to this bridge and finds this woman trying to end her life. And he pleads with her. Watch it. It's not just a silly romantic film about a boy who paid it forward and taught the world something different. It's about life and what people feel. Yeah, feel. I know men have difficulty with that word. They'd rather think. <laughs> but yeah, the emotions are there and we can't ignore them because we're human. And I was, I was saying to... Um, well, I just made a little comment on there saying, Reverend Simon Sideways. <laughs> I can, that doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? <laughs> when I said, you're not a robot and you're not a psychopath. You're a human being. I'd rather be a human, I think, and have all this gamut of emotions to experience, good and bad, devastating and bloody blissful. <laughs> than have no feeling at all. And if you are contemplating ending it because you can't get what you want out of life, then go to somebody like me <laughs> who can give you the tools to help you through. Don't all come to me because I can't cope with it all. <laughs> but, but, there's only one of me. Your life is precious. Whether you're sharing it with somebody or not, whether you have somebody in your life who you hate or you love and you fear losing, whether you're squashing their creativity, their abilities, because you're fearful, you're jealous, unkind, bullying. If you're doing all of those things, it's because you're frightened, because you're not confident in your own self. And you've got to stop it. Because you'll never get the best out of anybody if you do that. And jealousy is the biggest killer. Any kind of sharing, caring attitude goes out the window as soon as that comes in. The door. But yeah, I feel low too. I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. I'm not a psychopath. Although some people would think I was. <laughs> No, I feel too much to perhaps too much of a degree. But then I revel in the fact that I have got these feminine qualities about me that I like and I enjoy. I also hate as well because I can't control them sometimes. But I'd rather be me knowing what I know and having all the experiences that I've had in my life and the relationships I've had in my life and I look forward to having another relationship if it comes along because I haven't shut it off completely I just do feel tired sometimes when I think no I can't be bothered to play games anymore and by playing games I mean this texting and hiding and not responding and you know and you're thinking oh my goodness great <laughs> grow up <laughs> get a life do something do something with your life do something that you really enjoy that gives you passion that you know entertains you and enthralls you and makes you feel makes you feel <laughs> so don't give up I haven't given up I never will you know it's going to take death itself in the most natural ways because I'll never end it myself 
I don't want to. I have gone to the pits of despair and thought about it sometimes. But then I pull myself out of it and think, no, God's put me on this planet for some reason. <laughs> He's playing a game with me, I know, but <laughs> it must be. <laughs> but, you know, this life is for living. This life is for experiencing. This life is for enjoying too. And even though I've had everything taken away from me, and I mean everything, <laughs> I still continue. I still see that there is a light. Not at the end of the tunnel, because that might be the train coming the other way, but <laughs> I do have hope. I do love life. You get through the abyss. You climb out the other side and you begin to see the dawn of a new day. So if you're lonely, if you're yearning, if you feel sad, if you're trapped in this cycle of depression, if you're anxious, you got that naughty, horrible feeling in your side of you every time you think, shall I go and do this? Oh, no, I better not. Or if you're fearful of even approaching anybody, all I can say is, you've lived this long. If you take a chance, where's the worry in that? Where's the harm in it? There's nothing to be frightened of except yourself. I know. It is frightening the possibility of being rejected it is scary putting yourself out there and I often used to wonder I used to say to these guys in the army why is it that you can train to go and walk onto a battlefield and shoot a gun or stab someone with a knife and you've got all that energy out there and you can go and do that but you can't ask a girl out <laughs> And then I saw it on a bloody video the other day. I thought, oh, we sneaked my idea. <laughs> well, it's good. It's good that he's got that out there. <laughs> I'm glad somebody must have spread the story. <laughs> it's wonderful that people are sitting up and taking note. Take a chance. Live life. I'm going to get off my preachy box now. And <laughs> go and make my tea. I'll say bye-bye for now. And... Wish you the very best of luck in whatever you're doing. I'll be back again soon. <laughs>